Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Welcome to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. I'm here to share all the happy, uplifting, warm, fuzzy news with you. And today I have some of my favorite stories I think I've ever heard, to be honest with you. So a journey to find kindness nationwide has finally made a full circle. Maybe you've heard of the More Good Today project started by Mary Latham back in 2016. Mary packed up her mom's old car that she likes to call Old Blue and set out on a three-year journey to find kindness all in the memory of her beloved mother, whom she lost to cancer. Along the way, Mary captured her experiences with words, stories, and images that display the kindness and acts of pure goodness that she found all over the country. Over the three years, Mary visited 154 homes, traveled 43,000 miles, and visited 50 states. But now she has been welcomed home by her family and friends who have followed her through her journey the entire way. So you're probably wondering how this all happened and how it all started. Well, Mary's mother, Pat, passed away when she was only 61 years old after a long battle with breast cancer. Pat stayed positive and kind throughout the entire daunting fight for her life. She focused on beauty and hope in the world. When Mary, who was working as an assistant at a continuing legal education firm in New York, learned about the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in 2012, she was in tears. She called her mom, like she used to do all the time, and she was crying. She shared her grief about the tragedy. Then she told her about a stranger who had bought her co-workers coffee at Starbucks, paying it forward. And her mom told her there are always going to be terrible things that happen in this world, but you have to focus on what the other story is, the person who bought coffee for others. Those are the things that you need to put your focus on. Which is when the amazing idea came to Mary. So she wanted to travel across the U.S. finding out all the amazing, kind stories from people. Mary especially loved the stories that just involved the simple and little things. She wrote, I was about 24 years old, working as a teller at the Washington Trust Corporation on Block Island for the summer. It was a crazy, busy day, and I was tired, stressed, and grumpy. My customer, a young woman around my age, and I exchanged some pleasantries. She mentioned that I looked stressed out. I casually answered it was nothing more than some M&Ms couldn't cure. I cashed her check and she went on her way. When I looked up to call the next customer about a half hour later, she walked up and handed me some peanut M&Ms. I'm 52 now and I've never forgotten that day. I've shared that story with my children a few times over the years so they remember just how powerful a simple act of kindness can be. I believe that her kindness to me that day and the effect it had on me has led me to be a kinder, gentler soul. Mary said that she could sense her mother with her every single day through her year-long journey. So when her mother passed away, she made the promise to herself to do whatever it takes to make herself happy, no matter how crazy or outrageous it really is. So that's exactly what she did. She found kindness in every corner of the country. And from what everything that she experienced, she has a message that she wanted to share with everyone. Let people help you. They want to help you, and often they don't know what to do. If you're going through a hard time, let those who offer help. We all need each other, and if you can find good, then be good. 
Now that she's back home, her journey is not over. She said that she's going to take a very long nap and she's going to be putting together a book with all of her experiences and she would like to donate to hospital waiting rooms. I just think this story is so amazing. A young woman who set out on a journey for three years just to find kindness. You know, she brought her beloved mother with her along the entire way and she found kindness in every single day, just simple acts. And those are the most beautiful kindness stories, I think. My next story is is kind of another random act of kindness. I mean, there are so many random acts of kindness that we can do for people, whether it be big or small. There's endless opportunities and chances in this world to just do something kind for others. My next story is about a man who changed many people's lives. So about 10 years ago, in November of 2009, a philosopher at Oxford named Toby Ord set up an organization called Giving What We Can. His idea was to ask people to commit, with him as well, to donate at least 10% of their income every year to highly effective charities. So Toby chose to donate to organizations working to fight global poverty. So now, 10 years later, over 4,000 people from a wide range of backgrounds are all coming together and giving at least 10% of their income to these charities. Um, Giving What We Can is now part of a way broader suite of organizations um, trying to persuade people that they can use their time and money to make the world a sustainably better place by giving to good causes. So for the past 10 years... Toby has been studiously donating to his favorite global poverty charities. He says he's donated about $137,000 over his lifetime, or about 28% of the money he's earned. So how exactly did he come up with this idea? With this idea, Where is his story coming from? Well, he said that he's always been interested since he was little in how he could help uh, others, and particularly others who are less fortunate than himself. So once he started university, he had more time to think about this. He studied philosophy and read some works of Peter Singer and others. And I guess Peter Singer made it very clear how much one could do in one's life to help people who are less fortunate than oneself. So we thought about this uh, for a really long time, and he looked into how much good he could do with what he was making, how much, how many lives he could save, and he eventually decided that he had to do something about it. And that's when people just started to ask him, how can I join this? I want to be a part of this. And he realized that maybe that he should set something up that others can be a part of it and make this kind decision to change other people's life. So, is he still doing it now? Has he followed through? Yes, 10 years later, they are still abiding to the pledge. I guess most of his money has gone to SCI Foundation, which works on deworming, uh, Deworm the World, the Against the Malaria Foundation, and the Jamal Poverty Action Lab at MIT and also a variety of other organizations as well. Um, on the on the day that he actually launched this, 23 people signed up to give at least 10% of their income. Over that time, it has grown to 4,000 people, like I said. So that's actually more, so that's more than a factor of 100. So it's doubled more than seven times, which is an absolutely crazy growth. Toby really thinks that global poverty is one of the biggest issues in the world today. And there are many issues similarly profound, which would include, example, climate change and all these different things. And he's actually writing a book about it that comes out in March. So definitely stay tuned for that because I think it's going to be pretty amazing. But his organization, Giving What We Can, started based solely around global poverty, particularly global health interventions, because those were the ones that they had the most evidence about at the time. But, of course, over the past 10 years, it has been expanded to wherever you think could most effectively help others. Toby also says it's just a reflection, and he was just very excited to see how much he could do with the money that he has. He says that I morally ought to, but once I was doing so, it was amazing to see I could have such an impact on people's lives, and that I could join with other people and have tremendous impact altogether. You know, it's just so crazy how one person has an idea and then so many people will follow behind this crazy idea to help others. And then, of course, as a group, it makes an even bigger, more beautiful difference in the world. 
Well, this Denny's waitress that gave a couple a little extra ice cream received something a little sweeter in return, and it will absolutely shock you. Uh, Adriana Edwards, a Denny's waitress in Texas, walks four hours to and from work every single day. Yes, that is right. Four hours there and back every single day. She told CNN, I have bills to pay. You've got to do what you've got to do. So a couple who were at Denny's for breakfast found out that Adriana walked four hours there and back every single day to work just through conversation as she was serving them. So the couple enjoyed their meal, especially since Adriana gave them a little extra ice cream, and they left. They carried along with their day, and so did Adriana. Felt like a very normal day for her. Until a few hours later, when the same couple showed back up to Denny's with a car. Yes, this couple came back to Denny's with a 2011 Nissan Sentra and handed the keys to Adriana. She was actually working to save up for a car to avoid her long trek to work every single day and eventually to drive herself to college. The couple said this car will change your four-hour walk to a 30-minute commute. Adriana teared up, and the couple was just so happy that the kindness that they gave Adriana made her feel so emotional and grateful. All the couple wanted in return was for Adriana to pay the good deed forward in some type of way, which is exactly what she aims to do. Random acts of kindness really do create a a chain of kindness around the world. Of course, not all random acts of kindness include a new vehicle, but everything we do to help others for pure kindness really does make an impact. We have no idea what people are going through on a day-to-day basis. We don't know other people's lives when we cross them in the street. But the simple act of a smile or holding the door open or buying their $2 coffee in the drive-thru can absolutely change somebody's day. So with that note, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to be talking to you about a paralyzed veteran and what she just did. It is an absolute amazing story. So stay tuned right after the break. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or any where you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to GSMC, America Still Beautiful podcast. I told you I got a story about a paralyzed veteran, and I sure do. So retired Army Surgeon Teresa Veraline just completed the New York City Marathon without the use of her legs or a wheelchair. So she is not only the first paralyzed American to finish the famous NYC event, but also the first veteran in the world to complete it with an exoskeleton. This is just absolutely amazing. The drive and the passion that you have to have to complete a marathon without the use of your legs or a wheelchair is absolutely incredible. Completing a marathon with the use of your legs and running is just difficult enough. I cannot imagine this drive that Teresa has. So she actually completed the marathon over the course of three days. Of course, under the supervision of the organizers of the marathon, the New York Roadrunners. 
So this amazing woman walked 10 miles on day one and two, and then the final 6.2 miles on the day of the actual marathon. So she did get to finish with everybody else. She completed a full marathon without the use of her legs. I can't even say I completed a full marathon by myself. It is on my bucket list, but it is difficult to do that. So I am just absolutely outstanding by Teresa's drive and commitment to that. So she was wearing the Rework 5.0 exoskeleton suit, and it's designed to help paraplegics move around with the help of crutches for balance. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs established a national procurement policy for retired service members who are eligible to receive one of the life-changing devices. 65-year-old Teresa was the very first veteran to receive a device following the FDA clearance. Since then, she has traveled the world to talk about the impact that the exoskeleton has had on her life and her health. So patients with spinal cord injuries often require far more routine care than others. They suffer from increased risk of cardiovascular disease, urinary tract infections, bone density loss, chronic pain, and pressure ulcers. So just being able to stand up and walk around, however, even if it's unsteady, it increases blood circulation and oxygen intake, normalizes and improves ventricular function, and can fortify cardiovascular health. So it is completely helping with the side effects from the spinal cord injuries just by being able to get up and move around. So these exoskeletons are absolutely amazing if you haven't heard of them. And they definitely couldn't ask for a better spokesperson than Teresa. Uh, Teresa, to go around the world and talk about this, you know, she's so passionate about it because it really did change her life so much that she can do an entire marathon by herself without the use of her legs or a wheelchair. That is just incredible. The drive that that 65-year-old woman, Teresa, like, I cannot even imagine doing that. And she just has such a drive and a passion and The exoskeleton company cannot be more happy to have a spokesperson like her. Um, They've actually attracted a lot of research dollars with the robotic companies such as Rewalk, uh, Exco Bionics, Rex Bionics, and Suit X, which are all models designed to help people with spinal cord injuries move again and live a happy life. We all know that exercising and moving around, it generally just boosts our mood. It influences how we feel. And so if you are paralyzed, you you don't get that. So having this exoskeleton and being able to move around and get in your body and and get things moving and going, you're automatically going to boost your mood, how you feel, your outlook on life. You're going to live a happier life. So I think it's just so beautiful that these companies have come up with these amazing designs that really help those people live life to their fullest. And I think Teresa has completely taken it head on and gone full force by completing a full marathon by herself. Just absolutely incredible. So I have another veteran story that describes a bond like no other between two people. It is a bond way beyond blood. Two total strangers are going to be linked for their life because of one selfless, uh, one selfless sacrifice. So Ricky King last year was looking for a kidney and he was telling the world that he needed help. He was so desperate to get a kidney that he even actually printed it on the rear window of his car. He was doing whatever he could to try to get the word out to get a donor. His only Christmas wish was to receive a kidney. And his donor actually ended up being his neighbor. Uh, They lived on the same street, just two houses down. Armando Lanes is his name. They created this bond that just gets thicker and thicker. So Armando actually saw the sign on Ricky's car and it caught the eye of him. So he actually just went up to Ricky's door and introduced himself, welcomed him to the neighborhood, just like a neighbor would do. Um, and they got to talking. Ricky was explaining that he does not have a donor still. And I guess it was just an instant, easy decision for Armando to offer him his. 
So that's exactly what he did. Armando did give Ricky his kidney and has saved his life. But beyond all of this and that amazing connection right there, the two share one more bond. They are both veterans. Armando served in the army for eight years and Ricky retired after 24. So not only are they linked through, obviously, him giving his kidney, but they are both veterans. Their neighbors two houses down. Their kids play actually together. They're friends. And so their connection just hits deeper and deeper into the core. Armando actually explains why exactly he's doing this. He says, we will never leave a fallen soldier. We're going to take care of our own if it needs to be. Obviously, this has absolutely touched Ricky's heart and has absolutely changed his life. Um, Armando says that he knows he's going to take full advantage of it and really enjoy his in- retirement. And it's just in time for Christmas, only a year late. But hey, it's definitely better late than never. Uh, Ricky says he's giving me my life back and more, actually. I really appreciate him for doing that. He didn't have to, but he stepped up and did it anyways. So these two have been connected being neighbors, both being veterans, and now Armando is giving him his kidney and saving his life. I think that's just such a wonderful story. They have created this bond like no other. So on that note, another thing that makes us live a way happier life is being surrounded by greenery and the beautiful outdoors. So if you're living in LA and you're searching for a way to make Los Angeles home a little bit greener, uh, well, you got to look no further because the city is giving away free saplings to the locals. I think this is such a wonderful thing. You might have heard of the LA's Green New Deal. Well, as part of the legislators, they're aiming to plant at least 90,000 new trees over the course of two years. I think LA is definitely about to get a lot greener. And it's so true. Being around the outdoors and having a green backyard, it does. It brings positive energy, positive vibes, and it helps you live a happier life. So the residents in LA are encouraged to help them reach their goal by applying for up to seven trees to their qualifying yards or community spaces. Or you can even apply as a group of school staffers, neighbors, and small business owners for the trees to plant in your school campuses or shared living spaces. You just need to agree to take the responsibility in caring for the trees during the few years of its life. Uh, If you go check out the city's website, you can choose from about two dozen different drought-resistant tree species listed. I think this is so wonderful. It really encourages people to make a difference in their backyard and make a difference in their city and make it more green. And I think it also really encourages people to get outside more. You know, you want to be outside when your backyard is beautiful and filled with amazing trees, of course, right? So once you've selected your tree or your trees, then you just need to sign the document stating that you will water the tree for the first five years of its life. Um, Most of the trees need to be watered only about once a week or even less. So it's definitely not a huge responsibility, but it will add a lot more color to your LA neighborhood. It's going to get you outside, like I said. It's going to get you moving in your yard, and that's such a good feeling because that's definitely going to up your happiness in your life. So to make it even easier, the trees will actually be delivered to your yard, and they even come with all the stuff you need, like the stakes, ties, and fertilizer pellets, and of course, easy-to-follow instructions. Not all of us are garden or tree experts. I know I would definitely need something easy to follow along. But even if you're not living in LA, I think this story just shows that the effort for this that we're making in the country to go more green is really coming into effect, even if it's just one or seven trees at a time. I think it's so beautiful and so wonderful to see this happen and see this grow in communities, large communities. You know, everything's just going to keep getting greener and our world is just going to get more and more beautiful. I think it's amazing. One tree at a time. We are going to take a little break here, but when we get back, it's that time of the year, and I have some cheerful Christmas stories for you, so stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back listening to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. So Christmas is right around the corner and I just had to share this amazing story. I personally am a Christmas lover and so these kind of stories really just warm my heart. Christmas time is filled with lots of joy, fresh baked cookies, warm and fuzzy Christmas stories shared with the whole family, right? Whether or not that Christmas story be... How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or A Christmas Carol. The whole family can come together and read and listen to a joyful story. I personally think it's one of the best things about Christmas, all the amazing joyful stories. Well, Dee Dee Cummings from Middletown, Kentucky, wanted a story that her little boy could relate to a little bit more. In her story, called In the Nick of Time, a children's book inspired by her 11-year-old son, Nick, is a boy who saves Christmas. A common enough storyline, but this one is a little bit different. She's read many great children's Christmas books over the years, but can never find one with a character that looked like her son. So the book illustrations feature a young boy of color, but the story doesn't directly address race, and Dee Dee says that it just doesn't need to. The book's protagonist, Nick Saint, is a fiery, kind, and thoughtful person, and definitely full of life, just like her real-life Nick. In the story, Nick's biggest worry is waiting for the mailman to deliver his new video game until he accidentally received a letter addressed to Santa Claus from a student at his school named Cooper, whose only Christmas wish is for his mother to find a job. It's about the holidays and about recognizing when you have a blessing and to be grateful for those blessings. Nick comes to realize Christmas is not just about getting gifts. It's about helping people and recognizing those around you who are in need. Children really look up to people in their storybooks. It's in their minds and it stays with them. It really sticks with them. So of course most children don't understand racial inequality, but they do know how they feel when they see a character that looks like them and that character saves the day. It is a spare, it's a burst of enjoyment, happiness, you know, to see someone that looks like you as a little kid saving the day or doing something good or being the hero it gives them this moment of joy. So Nick says that he loves this book because it shows the good in the world and what good people can do. Also, it makes him feel like Christmas, warm and comfy and cozy. Well, Nick, I have to agree with you. I believe Christmas totally feels warm and comfy and cozy. So Dee Dee Cummings is a private practice therapist, and she started writing children's books after she spent years as a counselor for children in the foster care system. She has published 10 other stories, and two of them are about her older children who are now 22 and 27 years old. And it doesn't just stop giving there. Dee Dee and her family will help others in need this Christmas, just like Nick Saint in her story. They will be filling their living room with toys, and the family will be delivering them to the children. I think this is so wonderful. It's really taking a step forward and and helping kids learn about these things. And I think that's so important and so beautiful. Uh, they don't even realize that they're learning about these things, but having a character of color in a children's storybook will make a huge impact on kids' lives and how they feel and how they feel about themselves because I know it makes them happy to see somebody that looks like them in one of their favorite storybooks. 
It's such a wonderful lesson to share with children, and I just couldn't think of a more perfect way to do it. So the Christmas cheer doesn't just stop there. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. It's time for giving and spending with our loved ones. But but finding the perfect gift for someone could be very challenging sometimes. So I thought I wanted to share just some recent statistics with you. Uh, starting with some about Christmas shopping in general, um, 62% of Americans buy their gifts actually the week before Christmas. Talk about last minute shopping. Uh, 23% rely on social media to help make the right choice for their gift. Um, holiday retail sales in 2018 surpassed $1 trillion which is just absolutely crazy. And this was one of my favorite statistics. 46% have lied about liking a gift. I think we are all guilty about that. So now that's why I want to share with you some more statistics about what people really want for Christmas, what people are really looking for, and what would actually make them the happiest. Um, According to a recent survey, majority of Americans would rather receive something with a personal touch than an expensive item for Christmas. So 62% of Americans prefer gifts that come from the heart and feel more personal. I think this statistic really shows what the holidays are all about. It brings out that sentimental side for many people. Uh, I am definitely going to have to agree with this. I would way rather receive something from someone that is more personal and heart-touching than an expensive gift from a trending store. It shows that that person is thoughtful. They really thought about what you would like. You know, they know you well because of that personal gift. It's also said that the double amount of respondents would rather see receive a heartfelt gift over something more generic worth $100. 66% also said they would remember a more personal gift over something more generic or store-bought. And finally, 58% said they would likely tell others about the gift if it was heartfelt and personal as well. So with all those statistics being thrown at you, do you got any new ideas for some gifts this year? I, like I said, I love Christmas and one of my favorite parts is figuring out the perfect gift for each person that I hold close to me. It's definitely a great feeling when you know it's the perfect gift for someone. But I think it's even better if you get to make it or personalize it yourself for that specific person. It's not all about receiving the personal heartfelt gifts. It's also about giving them because it definitely makes you feel warm inside. Because it definitely makes you feel warm inside. And it's such a great feeling to make others feel warm inside from a heartfelt gift that you thought of. So now I have my last story for you for the day. And I personally love this one. It made me chuckle. So five-year-old twins have blown up the internet. Of course, what's new there? You might know them as Twin Squad. So Aaron and Evan Rowland dress up like their heroes. NYPD lieutenants. These two have traveled to police uh, precincts around the country showing law enforcement their appreciation while, of course, also building a following on social media. According to the twins' parents, it all started when the boys were driving their little car, a black mini Range Rover, on the sidewalk near their home in Manhattan's Washington Heights, the 34th precinct. Police pulled up to this side and said, oh, you're going to get a ticket. You're riding on the sidewalk. And the officers actually put their lights on and came out with their ticket book. Uh, it was just so real and everyone around was like, wow, are they really going to give these little boys a ticket? But of course, it was a joke. Uh, this joke, of course, became a viral video, gathering thousands of social media likes, views, and shares. So the two-year-old handed the ticket back to the officer, refusing to accept his summons, which is just absolutely hilarious. Uh, the boy's parents really wanted to think of a way to thank the NYPD. So they dressed these two twins up as a miniature cops with a little police car and took them to the police station. Of course, Everybody loved it. The reaction was absolutely amazing. And all of a sudden, the invitations came flowing in to go to the other police departments and do a roll call with them. So their social media pages continue to blow up, and they don't stop thanking those who serve. They've actually been to almost every precinct in New York City. 
Some officers even came to the boys' school, visit the kindergartners with their trucks and their canines. It's really shown these boys how important it is to appreciate the people who protect us. It's raised awareness for a lot of people to thank everyone who serves and who works hard every single day for our safety. It's definitely going to be a long time till these two little twin boys become lieutenants for real, but they say that one day they will be trading in their books for badges. Aaron wants to be a police officer, and Evan wants to head in a little bit of a different direction and be a firefighter. Well, I can definitely say these two young, courageous boys have a bright future protecting us one day. Thank you so much for listening to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe, and I really enjoyed sharing all these uplifting stories with you. Please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, like and follow us on social media, and give a five-star rating if you liked it. I look forward to sharing more amazing, heart-wrenching stories with you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast.